Hello children. Just in this video I'm going to discuss some important questions from the last lesson, the first lesson from Flamingo. And I'll explain it to you. How do you go about answering a question? Uh, I'm reading a question. It's from your book, which reads thus, Franz thinks, will they make them sing in German? Even the pigeons, what could this mean? Now, this is a short answer question. And, uh, uh, and it could have different versions. Now, this question says, what could this mean? The statement that was made by Franz, what did he mean by saying that? Now, this question could be, could be asked, uh, when did Franz say this? When did Franz say, will they make them sing in German, even the pigeons? That's one question. Another version could be, why did he say, will they make them sing in German, even the pigeons? Now, all these three questions will have different answers. You cannot give just one answer. So read the question properly and then write the answer down. Now, if you were to write it in the manner that you get a question, when did he say this? Now, when did he say this? When did Franz say this? When Franz was sitting in the class and he heard the pigeons coo. And then, because why did he say pigeons? It could be birds, it could be any animal. But then he used the word pigeons because he heard the pigeons cooing. And therefore, angry that he was, he passed a sarcastic remark saying, will they make them sing in German? Will they? They meant, they meant the Germans. And them here means the people of the village, the France, the territories that were conquered by the Germans. He means that way. Okay, so will they make them, that means will the Germans make these people sp uh, speak? Look, it's not speaking. It's the Germans had conquered these territories. Okay. The, uh, the Fra French territories. Now, they were enforcing their language German on these people. And the school in which uh, Franz was studying, the master, Mr. Hamel, he was leaving the next day. And uh, of course, he would be replaced by a German teacher. When Franz came to know, he was very, very angry. They would be deprived, these French people would be deprived of learning, studying their own language. So in that mood, angry Moody hears the pigeon squeeing. Right? And then he passes this comment. Now when did he say that? When he heard the pigeon squeeing. Okay, that's one answer. Why did he say that? Because he was angry. When he heard about the order passed from Berlin saying that no more French would be taught. It would be Germans that would be taught in the schools. Therefore, he said that. And what could this mean? Now see, the same question, and there would be three answers to that. As per your questions, statement is same, but the questions. Now, what did he mean by that? Now, remember the pigeons he meant. Now, how could pigeons um, speak anything? They coo, that's all. But then why did he say that? He simply meant that will the Germans be able to force the object, uh, the uh, pigeons to speak in German. Pigeons here symbolize the objects of nature. They can hear his meaning. I'm trying to explain you in detail. You're not going to write that detail. It's a short answer question, hardly 40 or 45 uh, worded answer. But then you must understand in order to answer the question. Here he meant that they can dominate the people, the French people. They can ask, order them not to study French in the schools, but German. Can they do the same thing with the objects of nature? Pigeons symbolize objects of nature. Can they dominate? Can they control these objects of nature and make them do what they want them to do? Do you get the answer? So when you get a question, it's not necessary mm, the same uh, answer. I told you three versions of this. When did he say that? Why did he say that? The reason for passing this sarcastic comment. And what did he mean by that? Right. He meant that will they can dominate the French people. 
to do what they want them to do. But can they do that same thing with objects of nature? And pigeons symbolize objects of nature. Can they command objects of nature? Can they dominate objects of nature? They cannot. You cannot do anything to the pigeons. They'll coo or they'll do what they feel like. Nobody can dominate them. Do you get the point? So that's the very, very important question, children. And see, I'm trying to give you, we cannot possibly discuss each and every, or you cannot possibly discuss or write down each and every um, question and the answer. There could be 50 questions from any lesson for that matter, or maybe 100 too. But then you need to know how do you go about answering a question. And that once you come to know that, it would be easy for you to answer a question, read the question properly, and then answer it. Another question, one, another question, how did Francis feeling about, feelings about Emma Hamill and school change? Now, this question could be a long answer question or it could be a short answer question. I told you, I've just told you that the short answer questions are about 40 or 45 words and the long answer questions would be about 100 or more words. Okay. Now, the difference between the two would be like, uh, uh, how did Francis feeling about Mr. Hamill and school change? If I were to ask you how did and why did, now there are two, two questions to the same thing. Why did it, they change and how did they change? Now, if I were to say why did they change, what, that means what brought about the change? Before that, he thought Mr. Hamill was cranky and he did not want to go to school and he, he did not do the homework and he preferred to stay out and enjoy the sunny day and so on and so forth. But then somehow he managed to go to school and then he got this message there. Okay, so that's, that is... Why did it change? Why did it change? Because he heard that it was the last lesson, French lesson that he was, he was to take. Right. And from the next day, there would be no more French taught in the school. Instead, German would be school. And why all this? Because of an order from Berlin. Only German would be taught in the schools. Okay. Hearing this, he was very angry, very annoyed. Okay, that's one version. And then he felt bad that Mr. Hamill was going also and all that. Mr. Hamill would not be there anymore. Now, if I were to say, how did Francis feeling about Mr. Hamill and school change? Now, the very same question here, you're going to say, how did they change? That means before that, he did not, he dis, sort of disliked Mr. Hamill, he considered him to be cranky, did not uh, want to study French. And remember one thing, children, there is a word, there is a word procrastination. Procrastination means, you know, you don't say that I'm not going to study French, but you just say, okay, tomorrow I'll study. It happens. You want to do a certain thing, you feel a little lazy. Okay, I'll not do it, I'll do it tomorrow. That's to procrastinate. Okay. I wish to get up early in the morning and I'm going to study. Exams are approaching early morning. I'm going to get up at 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock and I'll study. Right. But then, uh, no, I slept late today, so I'm not going to get up early in the morning. I'll get up tomorrow. So that's known as procrastination. You keep on delaying. Okay. So he procrastinated. It's not that he did not want to study, but I'll study. It's okay. It's okay. That kind of attitude he had. Now he felt guilty of not knowing that. His own mother tongue. Please don't say not speaking. Speaking would be spoken. French would be there. Any, any people cannot force you to speak a language, a particular language at home. If I am used to speaking Hindi at home, I would continue. How could anybody go about in the homes and forcing people to speak another language they don't know that so it's not spoken mind you it's reading and writing and of course if you read and write of course you would um, in due time would also speak the language okay so it's in the schools no more no more french would be taught 
Okay. So how did he feel bad? He was guilty that he did not know his language properly. And now there was no chance that he would be taught. He, was, he considered Mr. F Hamill as cranky, sort of a dislike. Now he was sorry that Mr. Hamill was going away. He would not see them anymore. Okay, now this would be a short answer question. The same question, if it were to be written in detail, then you would go talk about the order from Berlin and that Mr. Hamill was going and so on and so forth and how did he feel guilty the, uh, when he heard about the order. It was a thunderclap for him. It did un, very, very unexpected news it was. And how did he feel bad about Mr. Hamill going away? He'll not see him anymore. All the details would be the very same things you say briefly and in a long answer questions you go into detail suppose you uh, describe a lotus flower for instance okay short answer question you would say it's a beautiful flower and if it's a long answer question you would be describing its beauty that's the difference between a long answer question and a short answer question understand what i'm trying to tell you short answer just the lotus flower is beautiful okay but then if it's a long answer question, you would say, why do you call it? Why do you call it beautiful? What is the beauty in that? So that's the question there. Okay. So now he was sorry that he won't be able to see Mr. Hamill. Mr. Hamill, after uh, teaching for a long, long time, he was going to leave and so on and so forth. So understand a short answer question and a long answer question. Children, another question is there. It's... It's uh, Mr. Hamill taught sincerely during the last lesson. It could be framed in different manner, but the, the crux of the question is that Mr. Hamill was a sincere teacher during the last lesson, whichever way, but that's it. That's a statement that's given to you and you have to justify that or discuss that. Now, see, if you say, if I tell a child, you're looking very smart today. Now, what does that imply? Other days, the child was not that smart, as smart as he is today. You get the point? You answered brilliantly today. That means other days, the child did not answer brilliantly. So if we say Mr. Hamill was a sincere teacher that day, that means other days he was not as sincere as he was that day. That's it. Okay. And usually this is a long answer question. Now, why do we call him a sincere teacher that day? Okay. If I say he was a sincere teacher during the last lesson, why do I say that? I need to give an answer to that. Okay. Now, why was he a sincere teacher that day? What are the qualities of a sincere teacher? You, know, you need to explain those qualities of a sincere teacher. Like he was very honest. A sincere teacher is to be very honest. Now, why was he honest? What showed that he was honest? Can you think of it? See, he says, I am to be blamed also. He asks uh, uh, this one, Franz, a question. And Franz was supposed to learn the rule of, of participles, which he did not, of course. And he asks Franz, and Franz was unable to answer the question. And he says, for this I have also to be blamed. He blamed the parents. He said they, 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 what did they do? They preferred to send their children to work and, and get some extra money than to send the children to school. But then for me also, I have also to be blamed. Why? Because when I wanted a holiday, I send the children, I gave them a holiday. If I, I send them to water my plants, there was a garden outside the school. And I went, when I went, wanted to go for fishing again, I gave them a holiday. That was not supposed to be done. I'm a teacher. I need to be teaching the children, not giving them holidays as and when I feel like. Okay. So he honestly confesses this. Confession means when we do something wrong and children accept it. Yes, I'm sorry, but then I've done that. That's known as confession. Okay. So he confessed it. Secondly, he, he taught so well that day. He taught well that day that, and he wanted to teach all that he possibly could that day. 
and even Franz understood what he taught that day. And Franz says, okay, before that I found everything to be so difficult. It's so easy, I've understood it. At a point of time, he says, while Mr. Hamel was teaching, he says, well, I understood everything today. But then there are two reasons behind that, mind you. It's not only that Mr. Hamel taught him well. He also was paying attention because it was the last lesson and he would never get to study French again. So he was paying attention. But here we are going to say that Mr. Hamel taught well that day, even France understood all that was taught. Right. Then children, he wanted to teach everything, everything that possibly he could during that period, everything that he could teach, everything of French, grammar and reading and writing and everything, everything. Okay. Achha. Then after that, he infused patriotism in the, in the uh, children and the elders that were sitting at the back there. Remember, a teacher is not only going to teach lessons there. It, the teacher needs to infuse values, inculcate values in the, uh, the students that are sitting there. Otherwise, it's not just uh, the storytelling part of it. No, through the lessons you need to infuse values, values that would help you in your life to tackle difficult situations. So he infuses values. What is it? One is patriotism. Love your country. And then he goes on to praise the French language, the clearest and the most logical language. And remember, we study English, it's okay. But English is most unscientific language. No, no, N-O, no, N-K-N-O. Don't write that, but I'm just trying to explain it to you. So he tells the children that um, French is their mother tongue, is most logical and so on and so forth. He describes the language. He said, you must hold on to your language. Okay, hold on to your language, not forget language, your language. Because now you will not be taught French. You will be taught German in schools. But don't forget French. Because if you hold on to your language, that's what he says. If you hold on to your language, you don't forget. It's like a key to the prison you are in. It's like a key, key, you know, key opens the door, key opens the house, right? So he says it's like a key to the prison that you are in. And what was the prison? Remember, the French people were enslaved. They were made slaves. They were conquered by Germany and its allies. So they had to, to do what they were asked to do. And therefore, they were slaves. Slaves, you order the slaves and they'll do it accordingly. He, the master orders them and they do it accordingly. So he says, you are enslaved, you are in a prison. And if you hold on to your language, if you don't forget your language, you, it's like you have a key to the prison you are in and you can come out of the prison. Now, how does it, there could be a question to that. How, how is it a key to the prison? How could the language be a key to the prison? Children, the people speaking the same language would come together, they would be united, there will be unity. Why? Because of the same language. And if they are united, sooner or later they will be able to get out of the prison or get out of the enslavement they were, uh, they were uh, enslavement that they were in. Unit, language brings you close to each other. You go to some country, whichever country, foreign country. And there, you, for instance, even in India, you go to South. You go down South. Hardly anybody speaks Hindi. Okay. And there, it so happened, uh, my personal uh, experiences, we went there to Kerala, God knows what the city was. It was a small city. And there, um, there we, w we were asking for a, a, some kind of address. And uh, there was, and they did not understand. Anybody did not, nobody understood English there. Now we were in a fix. What do we do? We don't know their Malayali. They don't know our English, Hindi. Leave alone, forget it. So we were trying to make gestures and ask the people. So one lady, she came out of the house and she saw our plight. She said, "Hold on." She signaled to us, "Hold on," and she brought uh, her husband. And fortunately, her husband was from Gujarat. 
And he was absolutely delighted to speak to us in Hindi. He did not speak in English. He was absolutely delighted to speak to us in Hindi. And he asked about some details where we were going and what, how did we happen to be there and how did he happen to be there and he married a Malayali and so on and so forth. Absolutely delight. You could see the happiness, the joy on his face. And we were also happy that he could guide us to the, uh, lead us to the house that we wanted to go. Okay, so this brought us together, the language. So it unites. So he says, if you are hold on to your language, it would be, it would be uniting you. You would come closer to each other. That bond would be there. That language would be there. And sooner or later, you would be able to come out of the prison or the enslavement that you are in by the German people. You got the question. Okay, so, so he, patriotism, love for the language he taught those people. Love for the language, you love your language, such a mm, logical language, right? And then, and then he, how did he um, teach them patriotism? It's a long answer question. You just cannot say he taught them patriotism or he infused patriotism in them. How? He did not say love your country. He said love your language. Okay, La language is this, that and that. But how did he say that? Towards the end, on the chalk, when the bell rings, in, towards the end, with a chalk, he writes on the blackboard, big bold letters, long live France. That's long live France. That means, uh, what, what is he trying to say? Long live France. France, a country that was conquered or enslaved by the Germans and its allies. But then he says, long live France. That is trying to infuse patriotism in the French people. Okay, so all these things together. Remember a question, a long answer question, you may have 10 points, children. You may have 10 points, like I suppose you have a Mm, from mm, the other book, Visters, you have a lesson, um, Ivan Strize O Level. Ivan Strize O Level. Now, what helped Ivan to escape the prison? Was it his own intelligence or was it the foolishness or the blunders of the, um, the jail authorities? That could be a long answer question. But children, when you're writing that, there may be 10 blunders that the jail authorities did and the 10 um, intelligent or smart acts of um, this one. Mm. Ivan's that helped him to escape. But then 10 all, 10 you're not supposed to write them. The important 4, 5 would be enough. If you get such an answer, I'm sorry I'm deviating but I suddenly remembered. I wanted to you to understand certain things and therefore I said this. For instance, uh, France... I would say when you go to write the answer, was it uh, uh, smartness of Fran, uh, this one, um, Ivan's or the foolishness of jail authorities? I would say it was both. Certain acts of jail authorities were foolish and, and certain places Ivan's was smart. So three, four of this and three, four of that, you would get a, the proper answer. If you were to write, <coughs> you have five or ten points in an answer, not necessarily write all the ten points. Some important four or five points in a long answer question. Four or five points you write and that will suffice. In a short answer question, you need to write, you may have a lot of uh, points, but you may need to write two to three points or not more than that. That would be there. Because a short answer question is a short answer question. It's not a long answer. If you go about writing a long answer, what's the difference between a short answer question and a long answer question, children? And remember, I've seen if a short answer is long, they would deduct your marks. So try to one or two, three, four words more. It's okay. But more than that, you lose marks, even if your answer is perfect, children. So take care of all these small little things. There are all sorts of questions in, um, in this, this last lesson, small answer questions like why did the elders sit at the back? There were two, three points to that. Why did they come to sit at the back? And such kind of 
uh, answers you need. It's a short answer question. Why did the elders come? They came to sh uh, show their patriotism. They were sad that they could not study. And the third was that they were giving, uh, showing their respect for the master who had taught their children for such a long time. There are three points to that. Right. What was a thunderclap? Why was it a thunderclap? Now, these kind of short answer questions, there are lots of them and you needed to answer them. So take care what you answer and how you answer the question. As I said, very, very important. Read the question twice and then answer the question. And while you're uh, revising it, please go through the question first and then revise what you've written. You may have written absolutely correct, but it's irrelevant according to the question. So you won't get marks, you'll get a zero marks. Once a child asked me, how do we get full marks? How do we get full marks? I said, proper worded answer. Proper, the words that you choose, like I told you, procrastination. Procrastination is delaying your thing, whatever you wish to. Suppose I wish to get up early in the morning at five o'clock. But I'm not saying I'm not, never going to get up. But then it doesn't matter. Today I slept late, so I'm going to get up tomorrow. I'll do the exercise. No, I'll not do it. I'm tired today. So I'll do it tomorrow. And tomorrow, 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 that tomorrow never comes. That's known as procrastination. Here Mr. Hamill talks about that. He says, you felt I could, it's okay, I don't study today. I don't send my children to, he was referring to the parents. He said, I don't send my children today to school. It's okay, let them go work in somewhere and get some extra money. He'll go to school tomorrow. Franz also felt the same way. I'll study next day. Next day I'll study. It's okay. It's okay. They did not realize that very soon there would be nobody to teach them French. So that was procrastinating, studying, sending to school. Procrastination is a very important word. And remember that procrastination here. I've seen it in the lesson the, the questions that you get it from the lesson. So take care that you use those proper words which are very, very important. And short answer questions, lots of it. Short answer questions are there. Lots of short answers. I've discussed just two of them. Thank you, children.